Okay, welcome. My video for going over the practice problems for factoring polynomials. Okay, even though I had three different lecture videos, one for GCF, one for difference of squares, one for simple quadratics, which you should have viewed already, I did all of the all the practices together here. So there's one practice sheet for all three videos. Okay, just quick review, greatest common factor. Hey, what's in everybody? So notice this is 2 times x times x times x. And this is negative 1 times 2 times 2 times x times x. And 12x is 2 times uh, 2 times 3 times x. So what's common here for all the coefficients? What's common is the 2. And for x to the third, x to the second, x to the first, x is common. So basically we divide that out. 2x goes into everybody. And then what we have left is the other factor, x squared minus 2x plus 6. Okay, and we always check. <clears throat> this is a very common mistake for students, is factoring incorrectly. It takes like less than f 5 seconds usually to check, maybe 10. You know, 2x times x squared, that's 2x to the third, check. 2x times negative 2x is negative 4x squared, check. 2x times 6, 12x, check. How hard was that? And there's our factored form. Difference of squares. Notice most of the time we multiply two binomials, we get a quadratic. We get three terms. Okay, like this. A constant added to a variable added to that variable squared. That's what usually happens when we multiply two binomials. These binomials are special. The first term's the same, second term's opposites. We call those a conjugate pair. They make another binomial. So notice what happens when I distribute a times a is a squared, a times b is positive ab. Negative b times a is negative ab, negative b times b is negative b squared. These guys being added are exact opposites. That's why they're like terms, but they cancel. They don't just add up to make a, another b term. They actually cancel and make zero and go away. That's why we get a binomial. Very special form here. We use this form all the time. Really need to know that. Okay, simple quadratics. What do I mean by simple quadratic? That means with the coefficient on the x squared is 1. As soon as you make it something else, it's not simple. I teach to use the quadratic formula. Okay? So, but these are simple. So, if we have a quadratic, what's a quadratic factor to? Well, a pair of binomials. So, if this is a positive right here, then that means the two signs here are the same. So either they're both positive, that's the top sign, or they're both negative, the negative sign. And then this here in the middle will be positive or negative. And here's how this works. x times x is going to make x squared, right? x times h and g times x is going to make hx plus gx. So b is going to be the sum of g and h. And if g and h are both positive, that means b is positive. If g and h are both negative numbers, a negative added to negative makes a bigger negative. So that means b is negative. And then g times h is always what c is. So c is always g times h. And then what happens when the c is negative? Well, the only way we can multiply two numbers and get a negative is if they're different signs. So it's like the top signs. You have a positive times a negative. Or it's like the bottom signs. You have a negative times a positive. But the signs are different. But the pattern's still the same. x times x is x squared. So that gets us this guy. The b in the middle is the difference of g and h now. Because positive g and negative h, they're going to partly, one of them's, the small one's going to cancel out in the bigger one. And you're going to get a positive negative uh, difference left over. Same if g is negative and h is positive. And then so what happens? You get the difference and whatever the sign of the larger number is. So if the larger number between g and h is positive, then b will be positive. If the larger number between g and h is negative, and then b will be negative. And then, of course, a positive times a negative, when we do c, is always going to be a negative. So there we go. That's how the patterns work. Math is all about patterns, baby. Once you learn patterns, it breaks the code. Math is easy. So, here we go. Factor each polynomial completely. I always look for something common first. So 4 and 12, 4 goes into both those. Uh, 72, 72 is uh, 8 times 9. 
and notice 8 is a multiple of 4. So if we break 8 down into 4 times 2 times the 9, and we just kind of isolate the 4 out, so that means 72 is actually 4 times 18. Notice how factoring is, my friend. So we factor the 4 out. Okay, blue. Thought I hit blue. Guess not. So, factor 4 out, that gets me x squared, negative 3x, and negative 18. I multiply back and check. 4 times negative 18, yep, that's negative 72. 4 times negative 3x is negative 12x. 4 times x squared is 4x squared. And then this is a quadratic. So I'm going to assume for the moment it factors. And if it does, it factors to a pair of binomials. Well, x squared has to come from x times x. This is all stuff you learned in math too, guys. So this is a review. This shouldn't be new. The negative here says the signs are different. So one constant's positive, the other constant's negative. The factors of 18 are 1 times 18. 2 goes in 9 times. 3 goes in 6 times. 4 doesn't go. 5 doesn't go. 6 goes, but I've already found it. So these are my only possibilities. And with different signs, I'm looking for a difference of 3. There's a difference of 3. And the larger number is negative. So the 6 is negative. 3 is positive. My honors pre-cal kids on tests miss a third of these because they don't do the 5 second check, which is multiply 3 times negative 6 is negative 18, and then add 3 added to negative 6 is negative 3. Bam. How hard was that to check? Super easy. But kids will put down x minus 3 and x plus 6 all the time out of multiple choice answers. It's crazy. Just takes a few seconds to check. Anyways, there's number one. Number two, we look for something common. Now, by the way, this was a quadratic because there were three terms. Whenever there's three terms, I'm thinking quadratic if there's nothing common. Here it looks like 4 and 24. 4 is common. So we're going to take that out. x squared and x. Looks like x is common. And that gives me x. And plus 6. I multiply back and check. 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times 6 is 24x. Anytime I have x to the first added to a number, that's prime. There's no way to factor that. Because for a binomial, the only way to factor is a difference of squares. And this guy is not being squared. Whether that's a perfect square or not, doesn't matter. If this guy's not a perfect square, it's not a difference of squares. We're done. Bam. Let's do one more. So I feel like I'm missing something. How about 3x squared um, minus 48? How would we do this? Well, I look for something common. Uh, 4 plus 8 is 12. That's a multiple of 3. So 3 is common. So we're going to take the 3 out. And by the way, if you didn't know that, you just factor here into primes, or at least towards primes. 48 is 6 times 8. 3 goes into the 6, so let's rewrite 6 as 3 times 2, times that 8. And then we'll keep the 3 out, put the 2 and 8 together, so that's 3 times 16. So, oh yeah, 48 is divisible by 3, 16 times. So 3 times x squared minus 16. Multiply back. 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times negative 16, negative 48 with a binomial. I'm looking for a difference of squares since there's nothing common. So, yeah, perfect square minus a perfect square. So a difference, that's what the minus is. One's positive, one's negative. They have different signs. So a difference of perfect squares. So this is 3 times x plus 4 times x minus 4. And then you might be thinking, hey, 4 is a perfect square. This is a difference of squares. But no, it's not because x is not squared. x is to the first power. So this guy is actually prime. We're done. Bam. There's factoring simple polynomials. All right. Tackle that worksheet, baby. Let me know if you have questions. Ciao.